The video game industry involves a lot of different moving parts when it comes to developers and publishers. There's the high-end, top brass, AAA studios and publishers like Naughty Dog, Bungie, DICE, Sony, Activision, Nintendo, and EA. On the opposite end, there are a swath of indie developers comprising of small teams making their dream projects a reality with the help of crowdfunding or smaller-end publishers like Devolver Digital or Team17. And then there's the middle market. Middle market games were much more prevalent during the late 90s and early 2000s. Games like Fear, Tie the Tasmanian Tiger, Destroy All Humans, Red Factor, Action, or basically anything published by THQ. Essentially, a middle market or double-A game has a competent budget and team size without the clout of a triple-A game, but isn't a single person working for years in a game in their basement. Think Brothers in Arms compared to Call of Duty or Croc compared to Mario. While each market was strong during this time, as game development costs rose, the middle market shrunk, leaving a large disparity between triple-A games and indie games. Fortunately, in recent years, the middle market has made a bit of a comeback, as publishers were able to acquire decent-sized developers and intellectual properties. Games like the Sniper Elite series, The Surge, Elix, Vampire, Six Shards of Darkness, Greedfall, A Way Out, Kingdom Come Deliverance, just to name a few. One of the best examples of the middle market delivering top quality experiences is Azobo Studios' A Plague Tale Innocence. Azobo has been active in game development for nearly 20 years, starting off in 2002 developing some, well, interesting games for the PS2. They were soon tossed around, developing movie tie-in games, mostly for Disney and Pixar joints, and having a hand in some bigger third-party titles like Ubisoft's The Crew series, Xbox One Hidden Gem, ReCore, as well as Microsoft Flight Simulator in 2020. While they've had some independent work, most of their titles were licensed games from Garfield to WALL-E to Kinect Games to Monopoly. But A Plague Tale proves that they're more than just shovelware developers and have some truly talented storytellers, artists, and designers. A Plague Tale employs some historical fiction as the game takes place during the Inquisition and the Black Plague in the 1340s. This historical setting is fused with some medieval fantasy to create a very grounded yet fantastical setting that's unique and interesting. Players take control of Amicia de Rune. Amicia is the daughter of nobles and resides in the idyllic town of Aquiente in southern France. She lives with her mother, Beatrice, her father, Robert, and her younger brother, Hugo, who has been sick since birth and is taken care of closely by Beatrice. Little does Amicia know that her life is about to be upended when the Inquisition shows up at her front door. Looking for Hugo, the Inquisition storms the Darun estate, killing Robert as Amicia, Hugo, and Beatrice try to escape. Beatrice sacrifices herself to save her children, instructing them to flee and find a doctor by the name of Laurentius in a nearby village. With their home burning, their family and loved ones killed and all alone, Amicia and Hugo set out to find Laurentius, evading capture by the Inquisition and avoiding death from the spreading Black Plague carried by what seems like endless hordes of infected rats. The opening of A Plague Tale sets the tone for the remainder of the game. This game is dark, brutally so. A Plague Tale shows the nightmarish journey of Amicia and Hugo as they go from a rich and privileged upbringing to the lowest depths imaginable, and their fight to survive and try to return to some semblance of normalcy. There are scenes in this game that are intense, watching people being torn to pieces by rats, the Inquisition killing and torturing innocent civilians, having to cross an entire battlefield littered with corpses, using livestock as protection against the rats, people burning alive at the stake. A Plague Tale's dark and brutal world isn't just some selling point on the back of the box. This has to be one of the most depressing, horrific, and disturbing games I have played in a very long time. While that sounds like it could be a negative thing towards the game and turns some people off, I find it as fascinating as it is horrible. There's a reason why it's subtitled with the word innocence. Innocence is what Amicia and Hugo lose throughout the game, and it's because of this brutal world that they inhabit. Amicia and Hugo go through some absolutely traumatic events as the story unfolds. These events they witness and the acts they are forced to partake in to survive change them forever and that transformation is seen in both gameplay and story. Amicia doesn't want to kill anyone, but has to when she's forced to protect herself and Hugo. While it's justifiable, it still wears on her and thematically kills the innocent child she once was, transforming her into whatever the world requires to survive. A Plague Tale shares a lot of similarities with the Last of Us series, and its depressing and twisted tone is certainly one of them. And like the Last of 
of Us, the heart of A Plague Tale is the relationship and growth of its main characters, Amicia and Hugo. At the onset, Amicia seems like a spoiled and jealous daughter to affluent parents. The short but potent interactions with both her father and mother are polar opposites as she jokes and hunts with her father and bickers with her mother. Amicia's jealousy towards Hugo and his close relationship with their mother leads to her disdain for him. This jealousy is something Amicia wrestles with throughout the game as she not only has to protect her brother but also come to terms with why she resented him for so many years. The more Amicia and the player learn about Hugo's condition and the relationship with his mother, the more understanding and compassionate Amicia becomes. Hugo's mysterious condition is where most of the fantasy elements come into play. Hugo's blood is cursed, so to speak, carrying a supernatural evil known as the Prima Macula, which has been slowly killing him since birth. This cursed blood has a connection with the Black Plague, which the Grand Inquisitor, Vitalis Benevenent, wants for his own malicious purposes. Beatrice, being an alchemist, hid Hugo and his condition from the world, including her family. This not only caused Amicia to harbor jealousy towards her brother, but also shielded Hugo from the world outside his bedroom. Because of this, Hugo is extremely fragile both physically and mentally. Due to his condition, any sort of stress will set Hugo off on an anxiety-induced panic attack, and due to his isolation, he has this gullible sense of childlike wonder. The juxtaposition between Amicia's stern, responsibility-driven attitude and Hugo's naivete clashes throughout the game, leading to most of the internal conflicts between the characters. Oh, Hugo! Did I scare you? The Inquisition is here, Hugo. Do you want them to take you away? Don't ever do that again. All right. The dynamic between Amicia and Hugo is truly fascinating to watch play out as the two have to overcome absolutely horrific events throughout the story. Watching them struggle with their new reality, fighting against each other, learning more about one another, and realizing that their best chance of survival is being together even when sorting out their differences. While the overarching story that follows these two is interesting enough, the duo of Amicia and Hugo is the core of why A Plague Tale works on a narrative level. Gameplay-wise, it works just as well. Officially, A Plague Tale Innocence is categorized as an action, adventure, horror, stealth game. While there are elements of action Action, adventure, and horror, A Plague Tale is a stealth game through and through. The key to good game development is to give a player a small pool of mechanics to work with and slowly but effectively expand those as the game progresses, giving the player a real sense of tangible progression. A Plague Tale does this tremendously well, and it works in tandem with the story and characters to drive home the point of growth and overcoming the odds. Being a stealth game, the main objective in almost any scenario is to not get caught, as this will more often than not result in death, a brutal one at that. While this might seem a bit unfair, it's a welcome change for me at least. It's established from the start that these are the rules in which a plague tale exists and encounters are designed around that logic, so it makes scenarios more tense than they are frustrating. The connection between the gameplay and characters is why I think a plague tale resonated with me as a stealth horror game more than something like Thief, Dishonored, The Last of Us, Metal Gear, or Splinter Cell does. In those games, stealth is a power position as you're a killing machine in the shadows, picking off unsuspecting guards as the opposition gets increasingly worried about their missing comrades. In a plague tale, the roles are somewhat reversed. Throughout the entire journey, Amicia and Hugo are hunted by the Inquisition are surrounded by the plague-ridden rats. Hiding isn't just to get the drop on an enemy, it's to avoid capture and certain death. The tension Amicia and Hugo feel is shared by the player, which is a powerful motivator to not get caught. Going back to similar games in the genre, being caught isn't necessarily a game over, and players can run and hide, dig in and take out the waves of enemies that pursue, or slip back into the shadows to maneuver around the expanded opposition. While this design style offers a lot of player choice and agency, it mostly spoils the nature of stealth as a gameplay element. If there's always an out when getting caught, there's almost no reason to prioritize stealth, negating the tension sneaking around undetected should invoke. That's not to say Splinter Cell, The Last of Us, Metal Gear, etc. don't work, but a Plague Tale spin on stealth really immerses you into the world MBC and Hugo have to traverse. Your typical movement options are all here, where walking or running is louder than crouching, and crouching in tall grass or behind walls is the best way not to be spotted. Reading a guard's patrol pattern and making your move or distracting them by making a noise is as fun as it is in most stealth games. With the game being an elongated escort mission of sorts, players have to be wary of both Amicia and Hugo's positioning. Anyone who's played through Resident Evil 4 might think this sounds like it could be infuriating, but it's not, surprisingly. Very rarely do you ever feel like the AI is fighting against you, as it's always clear where they are in relation to the player character. Hugo is either holding Amicia's hand and right next to her, or staying wherever the player tells him to. This dual control is used in some interesting ways as well, where Hugo will have to open a path forward or drop a ladder from above for Amicia to progress. Hugo isn't the only companion throughout the game, as there are people he and Amicia meet up and travel with. Lucas is Laurentius's apprentice, Mele is a young thief that helps Amicia rescue Hugo, 
Hugo at one point during their journey, and Roderick is a brutish son of a blacksmith who escaped capture from the Inquisition. All these characters end up aiding in the gameplay somewhat as Lucas will help Amicia craft new items and ammo types, Mele has the ability to lockpick doors, and Roderick can stealth take down guards from behind. They can also be used in particular multi-part puzzles of sorts as well. While these gimmicks are usually level specific, these spice up the gameplay variety in new and interesting ways, along with strengthening the bond between the characters in-game. Pretty typical for the genre, but where A Plague Tale sets itself apart is with a slingshot. The slingshot is extremely versatile. You can whip rocks at objects to make noises that draw guards away, and it can also be used to take out guards completely. As the game progresses, the slingshot can be used to set fires to objects or people, extinguish flames, attract rats, and solve some light puzzles. Using Ignifer to light fires to drive rats away, or alternatively using Extinguius to put out fires near enemies to leave them to the rats. Utilizing Devorantis to melt the steel armor off of enemies, making them vulnerable, or Odorous to attract rats to wherever it's thrown, clearing pathways or drawing them closer to foes. There are a lot of options at player's disposal, which is compounded as you progress further into the game, utilizing more than one mechanic per scenario, which can be incredibly fun at times. There's a crafting mechanic attached to the slingshot as Amicia can gather supplies like sulfur, leather, alcohol, etc. to create various slingshot ammos associated with all of its mechanics. Like most crafting systems, there's always some neat choices to be made as each resource can be used to craft multiple objects. Do you save up your resources to upgrade your slingshot to release faster or upgrade your pouch to hold more ammo, or do you use them to craft more Somnium to put enemies asleep? The slingshot is a great mechanic that expands from a survival tool to a weapon with various ammo types and applications, which mirrors Amicia's growth from a scared girl fighting for her life to a survivor pretty well. The other mechanic that sets Plague Tale apart are the Black Death Riddled Rats. The rats are a tremendously impressive and disturbingly entertaining mechanic, and probably one of my favorite parts of the game, as morbid as that might be. Rats are a death sentence, but luckily for Amicia and Hugo, they only come out at night as they are afraid of the light. Unfortunately, the darkness is the best place to hide from the impending chase of the Inquisition, so dealing with horror of rats is inevitable. Rats are part threat, part obstacle, as the player has to either avoid or manipulate them in order to survive encounters. Since light deters rats, it's used in some clever ways both actively and passively. Sometimes players have to maneuver from light source to light source in order to survive, or use their own in order to carve a path through the sea of rats. As the game progresses, the rats are used in more and more unique ways, like being able to kill guards with them, or manipulate them to solve puzzles. Visually, this mechanic is super impressive, as what seems like thousands of rats can be on screen at once, organically reacting to light Sources. Les rats, c'est avant tout une, une grande prouesse technique. Euh, on a 5000 rats simul euh, simulés à l'écran en, en simultané, qui ont chacun leur propre IA et leur propre euh, behavior, avec une conscience de horde, euh, donc qui vient répartir, propager l'information autour de la horde, qui va venir se déplacer naturellement dans des décors euh, souvent très chargés. Conceptually, it's a ton of fun to figure out exactly how to maneuver your way around a situation when rats are involved. When the slingshot and the rat mechanics merge is when a plague tale really hits its stride. Setting fires from afar to disperse crowds of rats, putting out a soldier's torch and watching him get devoured, or firing stink bomb-like projectiles away from the path as rats scurry towards it. The best aspect about a plague tale gameplay-wise is how each mechanic doesn't stagnate and new twists and elements are added to always keep things fresh. For example, in the beginning, your only option is to really just avoid soldiers, whether that's creeping around them or distracting them. As you progress, Amicia learns that the slingshot can kill guards with a well-placed headshot, taking them out of the equation completely. Eventually, guards will start wearing helmets, making the shots to the head more of an announcement of your presence than a kill shot. This new element will cause players to weigh the options of whether or not to dissolve the soldier's helmet, switching to a rock and taking them out is worth all the resources, noise, and risk, or if another avenue should be taken. With the stealth sections featuring the Inquisition soldiers, avoiding the plague-riddled rats, and the occasional chase sequence, A Plague Tale's pace is spectacular. I spoke on the technical impressiveness of some of A Plague Tale's attributes, and that extends to the entire game. A Plague Tale has impeccable presentation, not on the level of a AAA game like God of War or The Last of Us 2, but definitely on the periphery. Given the scope and scale of the game, the visuals always manage to impress from abandoned castles, infested monasteries, or war-torn battlefields. A Plague Tale's visuals drive home the despair and dread of many of the game's encounters and scenarios, drenching the game in a somber and dire tone throughout. Enhancing that tone is the brilliant soundtrack from French composer Olivier de la Vere. Using period-accurate instruments, Derivere created haunting soundscapes to drive home the nature of some of the game's biggest set pieces, oppressive pieces featuring deep cellos and drums, or lonely compositions accented by violins. The score drenches the gameplay and scenarios in depravity. While there are other great titles coming out of the middle market, A Plague Tale exemplifies the best of executing a vision within tight restrictions. Asobo have clearly shown what they are capable of, having a concise vision and executing it brilliantly, creating a tense and beautifully disturbing experience. With fantastic characters, ever-evolving and engaging gameplay, and a presentation that ties everything together, A Plague Tale is a testament to what a passionate team can do regardless of resources. Mm -hmm.